welcome back to another exciting episode of X-Ray Education. Okay, so today um, we were going to talk a little bit about transformers and rectifiers. Now, there's several different kind of transformers that are used in an X-Ray circuit. We call that box in the corner the generator. This is the generator in my radiography laboratory. And as you can see, it basically just looks like an apartment-sized refrigerator sitting over in a corner of the x-ray room. Uh, it doesn't look like too much. Here's the x-ray table, and here's the x-ray tube. Okay, but over in the corner, everybody's got one of these boxes. We call it the x-ray generator. Now, what in the heck is inside that thing? Well, let's take a look. Okay, I'm not going to show you. You were probably getting all excited thinking I was about to break out the tool set and crack open that generator box. I'm not. And by the way, generator is kind of a misnomer. We call it a generator, but it's really not that. Generator is what's down at the power station. You know, you've probably, depending on where you live, you might have a coal-fired power plant, very likely, um, a natural gas-fired power plant, or a nuclear-fired power plant, which is what we happen to have here in southeastern North Carolina. We get most of our electricity from uh, down in Southport at the nuclear power station. Um, so anyway, that's where our power is generated. Now, inside the nuclear power station, there are some giant generators that run off of steam power, and those guys just sit there and spin all day, and their job is just to, you know, take that steam pressure and spin a turbine and thereby spin an armature and generate electricity. And those guys sit there and spin and they generate electricity at 60 cycles per second, three phase. And then they sell that power to all their customers. We happen to be one of their customers. Now, how does that electricity come into my building? Well, I'm not sure exactly how many watts the power station generates. I think it's something like 3 megawatt or something like that. I can't remember exactly. But it's a lot. I mean, it's substantial power. Now, we only get 220 volts, 60 hertz alternating current coming into our building. So coming in from the power pole out on the street, you know, power pole has got um, a little transformer sitting on it and that transformer drops that uh, current, whatever it happens to be, the voltage, down to 220, and then it comes into my building, okay? And so here I get my current coming in, 220 volts um, RMS. Okay, so 220 volts, cool. I can run an x-ray machine off of that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 220 volts and I'm going to run it through my transformer box. Now, what is inside my transformer box? Several different things. One of them is an auto transformer. Now, the auto transformer is basically a lot of copper wire wound around a core, and this is very, very simplistic. If you go on um, eBay, and look for an auto transformer. You can buy your own that you can play with. Basically what you do is you plug that thing into the wall and then that transformer can either step up or step down the voltage that you hand it. So you can have like a low voltage with high current or you can have a higher voltage with a lower current. And the way the thing works is like this. Okay, I'm going to rig it up to my 220 volts somehow and then I'm going to just um, have a tap over here, or a series of taps. And the more coils my electricity passes through, the higher the voltage is going to be. So, like maybe right here, if I have, if I tap these two, um, then maybe I just get like 40 volts. Okay, that's a possibility. Now wonder if I tap this one and this one down here. Okay, so maybe, see right here is my 220. 220 is my max potential on this leg. OK, 
okay, but over on this side, depending on how much of this auto transformer I tap, you know, maybe instead of 220 volts, I'm coming off of here with, say, if I tap down here, sorry, let me erase this, okay, because we did have 40 volts, but maybe if we, if we tap onto the circuit here and down here, then instead of 40 volts, maybe now we get like, uh, you know, 240 volts or 260 volts, something like that. Okay, and then maybe if we tap all of them, like if we, if we go from, if we tap the entire coil, because remember our primary is, is just this area here. Okay, and then this whole thing could be considered our secondary coil. So maybe if we tap this whole thing, we wind up getting like 580 volts, something like that. If we use this entire coil. So as you can see, depending on which of these, um, where on the coil we tap into, this auto transformer can either step our voltage down or it can step our voltage up. But our input voltage is always the same, 220 volts. So this basically is the, the idea behind an auto transformer. Now remember, we're using 220 volts and we're going we're gonna to amplify that current in the auto transformer before we pass it off to the high voltage transformer. And one of my students was saying, well, why don't we just use a variable rheostat here? Well, okay, variable rheostat would work, but the only thing that's going to give us is a, at most 220 volts coming off the secondary. Because remember, a, a rheostat, the only thing it can do, because it's a variable resistor, it can cut your electricity down. You know, think of it like the, the dimmer switch on a chandelier in your living room, right? Um, that thing can't generate more than 110 volts. What it can do is it can cut the electricity down and it can dim your lights, but it can't amplify that electricity. The advantage of an auto transformer is it can either reduce the voltage or it can amplify the voltage. Now, it's not unlimited, so we wouldn't be able to get like, you know, 150,000 volts out of this thing, but we could definitely get, you know, five or 600 volts off the auto transformer, maybe even more. Okay, so let's just erase this. So now what we've got, as we've seen, we've got electricity coming in and we've run it through this auto transformer. We've selected how much of the auto transformer we're going to use somehow. And this is basically the function of your KVP selection whenever you're selecting your kilovoltage on the control panel. You might hear the box in the corner clicking and those are relays selecting which taps to use. So as you change from like 60 to 70 to 90 kVp, you'll hear those relays clicking, and that's what they're doing. They're adjusting the auto transformer coils. Okay, so now we've got voltage coming off the auto transformer, but we need a lot of voltage. We need 80,000 volts, 100,000 volts, 120,000 volts, depending on what kind of x-rays we're planning to do. For an abdominal series, we might just need 90 KVP, 90,000 volts, but for a chest x-ray, we probably need like 120,000 volts, right? And for a hand, we don't want to shoot a hand at like 90 KVP because that's going to burn out our tissue. It's going to be too dark. So for a hand x-ray, we might just use like 60,000 volts, 60 KVP. Okay, so we've got to select, and then coming off of the auto transformer, we're going to feed into a device called a high voltage transformer. Now the high voltage transformer, and I'm just going to draw this thing, um, most high voltage transformers look kind of like this nowadays. Oh boy, okay. Look, my parents paid for me to go to art school, and I blew all the money on, uh, you know, wine, women, and song. And so, yet yeah, I wound up without too much drawing capability. But this is kind of how these transformers look. Something like this. Okay, now, this whole thing is made out of metal. Um, typically, um, like iron, something like that. 
that's very um, susceptible to a magnetic field. Okay, so inside my transformer, I'm going to have typically a coil, right? Um, but inside another coil. So I'm going to have a primary and a secondary. And now what this is going to do is this, gonna, this is going to take whatever voltage I fed it from the auto transformer and amplify it still further. So pretend like I tapped some of these. I tapped into my auto transformer and I came off my auto transformer with like 80 volts. Okay. Work with me here. So I come off my transformer, my auto transformer with 80 volts. And I feed that 80 volts into my primary transformer. Right? And suppose that in my primary transformer, for every one turn on the primary side of the transformer, I've got a thousand turns of secondary, right? Okay, so pretend like I've got, for every single turn on, this, on the primary side of this transformer, I've got a thousand turns on the secondary, which means that this is a 1,000 to 1 transformer. So what, every time I put one volt into this thing, I get a thousand volts out. That'd be a pretty strong transformer, but certainly not beyond the realm of possibility. But for, for our purposes, this is going to make things really, really easy from a mathematical standpoint. So, um, all right, so transformer law. This is kind of how this goes. Okay, Vs over Vp, voltage secondary over voltage primary, is equal to the number of turns on the secondary over the number of turns on the primary. Okay, so if we're going to do a little math here, and I want to find out, okay, if I put 80 volts onto this transformer, how many volts are coming off the secondary? Well, I'm not sure. Okay, but let's, we can quickly find out. Because voltage secondary over voltage primary, that's going to be Vs over our primary voltage was 80, is equal to Ns. Remember, we got 1,000 turns on the secondary for every one turn on the primary. And how many uh, turns are in this thing altogether? I don't know. It doesn't matter. As long as I know this ratio, I'm good to go. Number of turns on the secondary, number of turns on the primary. Okay, so, I mean, this could be like 40,000 on the secondary and 400 on the primary. You know, or 40 on the primary, whatever, you know, you can, whatever the numbers are, this equation will still work, trust me. Um, okay, so here's my setup. Um, so what I'm going to do here is just cross, multiply, and divide. So 80 times 1,000 is 80,000. divided by 1 is still 80,000, so 80,000 volts. Now, can I use 80,000 volts? Yeah, that's 80 kV, 80, uh, 80 kilovolts, right? So that's going to be like my 80 kVp. All right, now, um, as you guys know, and you're probably wondering, well, wait a minute. Okay, coming in from the street, we were using alternating current. And going into the auto transformer, we were also using alternating current because transformers only work with alternating current. So going into the primary transformer here, we were still using alternating current. But didn't you say in a previous video that for X-ray production, that tube needs to be rigged up to direct current? Well, yes, that is absolutely right. So we have another step to go through before we get to the x-ray tube. What we're going to need to do is we're going to need to feed this 80,000 volts we just generated through something called a rectification circuit. Rectify means to just put right. Now, in our case, what we're going to do is we're going to take that 80,000 volts of alternating current and we're going to run it through a series of diodes and I'm just going to, I'm not going to step through this in detail. I mean, I guess we could sit down with a pencil and paper and do it. But trust me when I say, 
If you have your current, rig, you have your uh, alternating current rigged up to a set of diodes here, and this is going to be like a big old printed circuit board full of uh, diodes and associated electronics that make the whole thing work. Coming out of the other side, we're going to still have our 80,000 volts, most of it anyway. We're going to pretend like we get the whole 80,000 out of this thing. But, coming out of the rectification circuit, now what we've got is 40,000 volts negative, minus, and then we got 40,000 volts positive. And this looks like an ideal situation and a good place to put an x-ray tube. Turn that just a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing over here. Okay, so if I've got negative voltage here, what does that mean? Well, that means that this is going to be the cathode end of my tube. I'm just going to draw it like that. 40,000 volts positive sounds an awful lot like the anode end of my tube. So I'm just going to draw it like that. This like T-shape with the slopes should be the universal symbol for anode. Okay, so that's what that is. Cathode. Big potential. Negative 40,000, positive 40,000, total 80,000 volts potential. So, over here at the control panel, whenever I press my switch down and I close this circuit, all of a sudden I've got 80,000 volts of potential pulling any helpless electrons from the cathode to the anode. And those guys are going to fly really fast. And I can make them fly even faster. If I, you know, say I'm not satisfied with 80 volts here, I tap some more of my auto transformer and and I feed 110 volts into this same system, what's going to be my output? Well, 110,000 feeding into a 1,000 to 1 transformer, well, that's going to give me 110. If I just replace the 80 with 110, all of a sudden now I've got 110,000 volts on this thing, and that's going to wind up being 55,000 on one side and 55,000 on the other side. Negative, positive, boom. They, you total these things up. Remember, this is like vector math. I don't know if you guys remember that from um, high school or not. Okay, so there we go, 110,000 volts. Now, here's a problem, and you, you may have thought of this as we were going along. It's like, okay, well, wait a minute. We know a thing or three about transformers, and we just happen to know that any time you multiply the voltage by 1,000, you have to compensate by dividing the current by 1,000. So even though, yeah, you know, this is great, you've got 110,000 volts, but what about current? You know, do you actually have enough electrons to do anything with at that point? Well, the truth of the matter is no. If this was all there was to the X-ray circuit, then it would take us forever to make an exposure because we just simply don't have enough electrons over here. We've only got one thousandth the current we started with and the current wasn't all that big to start with. I can't remember what the household current is coming in but um, you know it's not that many amps and if you divide that, say you got like 20 amps and you divide that by a thousand well okay that is like that's 20 divided by a thousand which is going to be like 0.0005 amp not much, right? That's, that's going to be like 5 milliamps. And who wants to do all their x-rays at 5 ma? Can you imagine how long it would take to do a chest x-ray if you had to do everything at 5 milliamps? You know, your time would be, okay, how do you multiply like 5 milliamps to come up with, you know, 5 or 6 mass? Well, you're going to need a lot of time. You're going to need like a 5 second exposure time. Not really doable. Okay. What can we do? 
where can we get some electrons to feed into the circuit so that we can kind of speed this process along? No sweat. We'll just build a secondary circuit. So here's what let's do. All right, we got 220 volts coming in from the street. We've already figured out. Okay, so we got 220 volts coming into our box. Why don't we split some of that voltage off and feed it into another system? Okay, so we're just going to take our another 220 volts and we're going to have a separate 220 volt line and we're going to feed that into either a small auto transformer, okay, could be an auto transformer, or this device could actually just be a rheostat, a variable resistor. Reason being, we don't have to worry about very much voltage over on this side. We're this is going to be a low voltage circuit. Okay, so either through a small auto transformer or a variable resistor, I'm going to feed 220 volts or less into a device here. And this is going to be another one of these transformers, but except for in this case, and I'm still going to draw a shell transformer, but in this particular transformer, I'm going to have a whole lot of coils on the secondary, and then I'm only going to have a very few coils on the primary. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to have a whole lot of coils on the primary, but only a few coils on the secondary. Okay, so this is going to be a step-down transformer. Okay, so now I've got a step-down transformer, which means my voltage is going to go down, but my amperage is going to go up. Okay, let me just move my camera here a little bit. Okay, step-down transformer. Now, what kind of step-down transformer have I got? I don't know. It could be like, like a 1 to 200. So, like, say, for every turn on the secondary, I'm going to have 100 turns or 200 or 300 turns on the primary. As long as I know from the manufacturer what that is and what to expect, then uh, it doesn't really make any difference. But the point is, my voltage is going to go way down, but my amperage is going to be amplified. So coming out of this thing, you know, walking in, maybe I've only got like, you know, like 0.5 amp, something like that. Okay, but coming out the other side of this thing, maybe I've got like 5 amps, which would be plenty for my purposes. Okay, and then this circuit is going to feed up into the x-ray tube, and it's going to come out here in the cat. I'm not going to draw it up through here because that's going to get really messy. It's not going to look right, but okay, this circuit here, the low voltage, is going to go up and into the tube from the cathode end, and it's going to end right here in the focusing cup, and the terminal point is going to be a filament, what we call a filament. That filament is connected back here to the step-down transformer, so what the filament is getting is a lot of amps, but just a little bit of voltage. And what winds up happening is whenever I turn this on, whenever I go to rotor up my machine and I activate the filament, then this is going to be a low voltage, high amperage circuit. And so that filament is going to get very, very hot and it's going to expel a lot of electrons. So now instead of having like, instead of having five milliamps, now thanks to this secondary circuit and my step down transformer, Maybe I've got like six or eight hundred milliamps going into this filament. Okay, now I've got plenty of electrons, and now I can make an X-ray exposure 
in like five milliseconds instead of five seconds. And so that's kind of how this whole thing works. Um, so we've got a primary side with high voltage, and then we've got a secondary with low voltage, and the only thing the secondary does is feed electricity to the filament. So, and you know, thanks to this variable resistor here, I can throttle this back or I can turn it up, right? So I can adjust my milliamperage using this at the control panel. And so I say, well, you know, for this particular exposure, I want to use 300 MA or 500 or 600 MA, whatever I select. Remember, every time my MA goes up, my time goes down and vice versa. So if I want to minimize patient motion, I'm going to use a lot of MA. I'm going to turn up the heat on the secondary. If I want to have an extended exposure time, like say I'm doing a transthoracic humerus and I want to use a breathing technique, well, in that case, I can turn my milliamperage down, again, using this control here, turn the milliamperage down, and I can turn the time up, so I extend out my time, I have the same amount of mass, and this time I can use breathing technique. Now, most of the time in x-ray, what do we want to do? Minimize the time. We want to try to minimize motion. That winds up being important for most of our x-rays. I mean, think about when was the last time you did a breathing technique for sternum or um, shoulder or something like that. It just doesn't happen all that often. Most of the time we want this auto transformer on the secondary turned up pretty high. You know, four, five, six hundred MA so that we get a really short exposure time. All right, so I'm gonna go through some problems with y'all on a worksheet that I have where we're gonna be doing some voltage computations, but this, in a nutshell, is how the circuitry works that supply, and remember, our whole goal is to supply this x-ray tube with high voltage across the tube from anode to cathode, but then we also need to have the secondary low voltage circuit to give us these electrons that we stripped out whenever we increased our voltage on the main circuit. All right, hopefully that is somewhat explanatory about this stuff, and I'll be back with you for more later on. Thanks very much for watching this episode of X-Ray Education, and hopefully y'all will tune in next time and we'll do some more interesting things. All right, have a good one.